now we are approaching the end of our sermon on foundational wickedness dealing with foundational altars dealing with household wickedness if you have been paying attention beginning of january all the way to the end you will notice that the topic of wickedness in our foundations has been central we have preached on it we have tried to elaborate on it and now we are wrapping it up dealing with wickedness in our foundations and i know that many people learned many things you have i have we all have and i thank god for all who took part in the prayers and the prayer points that we were sending in the evening and i believe that the lord worked in mysterious ways and in miraculous ways to deal with our foundation let me tell you the truth when you are doing spiritual things you don't have to rely on your physical senses but you rely on your faith and on the written word of god and if the word of god tells you jesus can save you from anything and from all the power of the devil you best believe your foundation is being visited and god is removing all the wickedness that was in your foundation never say to yourself i will never finish this battle because it is not you who fights the battle you can look and see that there are many evil spirits fighting your foundation but what is the truth the lord is able to destroy all of them he saved legion from over 2000 evil spirits in a single statement in a single move he can save you from all foundational spirits there are so many things in our foundation and i tell you the truth it is only the lord which delivers so i want to begin by praying father we believe that you have delivered us and will continue to deliver us from spirits from our foundation there are so many things in our foundation and we have learned that these things are not good for us and we have learned that everyone has got things in their foundation more importantly we are convinced that you lord have caused us to understand this subject not to put fear into our hearts not to make us sad not to make us unsure of our future but because you love us and you want to deliver us every father who shows or who tells their children about what's happening in their lives does so with the explicit intention of saving helping and delivering those children which i believe is our situation father i thank you in the mighty name of jesus christ we are empowered when we go to interact with family and friends we will share with them the wealth of this knowledge whoever needs to know whoever needs to be delivered will be delivered by the mercy and grace which is in christ jesus we pray in the name of jesus christ amen child of god my name is minister td mkana and we have come to the end of our series on foundational bondage the bondage that is in the past the bondage that reaches out and affects the present let me tell you the truth jesus christ did not come to do away with the war between us and satan he came rather to disempower satan and to empower us to recreate the situation which was in the garden of eden where his representative adam was the one with power when the devil tricked uh, adam and took away that power jesus simply came back and gave us the power hence in matthew 28 he says from verse 18 to 10 20 all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me therefore go and make disciples of all nations which means jesus took back the authority he gave us the authority so that we can reign on earth in his stead and do wonderful and miraculous things when you know that the power was given back to you you don't give it back to the devil you don't lose it again you hold on to it and you pray unto the lord to exercise that power remember you are still required to tremble upon serpents and scorpions to pull down strongholds and to maintain the rulership of christ in your life in your family in every aspect of your existence so 
Today we will start off by reading a very important psalm here. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Call to me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you will honor me. Now, if you read verse 14, same chapter, it says, Sacrifice thanks offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. So you are already in a place of rejoicing. Many things have happened. And you have prayed many prayers, fervently and with faith, knowing that the Lord does indeed deliver. And you have come to the end of this month, January. And you should be walking in confidence now, knowing that the Lord in His mercy and His goodness has delivered you. Problems did come. Challenges did come. I know that when you were fighting against spirits in the foundation, strange things were happening around you, and God was revealing His power in miraculous ways. I tell you the truth. When you call unto this God, you are not put to shame. I have not been put to shame. You will not be put to shame. He says, call unto me. He is confident about it. You are the one who is wondering if indeed there will be changes in your life. But he is challenging you to try it. Just like you see uh, on the television shows, when they have a number, they say, dial 911 and we will react. We will come. So what am I saying? I'm saying it is the confidence of God. God is challenging you to call him. Call unto him. Isn't it? Call unto him. Call unto him. And he will answer you. And he will deliver you in the day of trouble. Right? Call unto him. And he will answer you in the day of trouble. Which means some people grew up thinking there is no trouble out there. But then they encountered eye openers. They encountered the truth, isn't it? And they realized, look, we are in trouble. But what does it mean? Does it mean we should now be scared? Does it mean we should now panic? Not at all. Or not necessarily. All that it means is focus your attention on the Holy Spirit. Focus your attention on God. Believe in Him. When you call unto Him, it's not a panic call. It's a call of confidence. Just like a child who knows that their father has got their back, calls unto the father and says, Father, I am in trouble. Help me. When you call unto Jesus, do so knowing who he is to you. Do so knowing his exploits. Do you know that sometimes children can choose which parent to call to which situation? When my children want someone who can cook for them a delicious meal, they don't call unto me. They don't have confidence in my cooking skills. They doubt my cooking skills and I'm not offended because I'm not the best cook. I would even ask them, you, what do you want right now? And they would say, ah, we want food cooked and we want delicious food. And I would say, of all people, why would you call me? You know I'm not a good cook. Why did you not call your mother? Because my wife is a better cook. But if they need advice about something to do in the garden, and they need advice about something to do uh, with uh, our, elect our electricity situation. Definitely, they will call unto me. Because they know our father, when it comes to the garden, knows what he's doing. They would not call unto their mother. What am I saying is, when you know that God is able, you call unto him with absolute confidence. When you know that God can deliver, when you have a history of God delivering you, when you have a history of God, not history that you read in a book, history of walking with God. 
history where you have called unto God before. History where you have sought for him before. All the prayers that we did about foundational disasters, foundational trouble, foundational serpents, even foundational witchcraft. All those things that we learned about were not being taught to us to cause us to fear the devil. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Those were given unto us to empower us to then have full confidence in God, knowing that when we call unto him after learning about the wickedness in our foundation, he is able to locate, without even being directed by you, what is in your foundation. Using all the prayers you prayed since January 1, God can then go to the very root of the problem. Locate the root of the problem. Deal with the root of the problem so effectively without even consulting you to say, how do you want me to deal with this? God simply needed you to address the issue. Remember, prayer is like dealing with weeds in your garden. It is the weeds that you target that are dealt with. You are dealing with foundational cases, foundational troubles. Remember what we said. Everyone has got a foundation. And the foundation we are talking about is your history and the history of your people. And we said everyone must know their foundation. Everyone must know the issues that your people deal with. And we said, whether you believe it or not, the devil exists and the devil does fight. And the devil's biggest weapon is your ignorance. Tell your neighbor the devil's biggest weapon is your ignorance. If you are ignorant of a situation, if you are not empowered and you don't know a situation, but I guess the devil's greatest weapon is your unbelief. If you do not believe in the situation being presented, and if you do not believe that thing actually exists, then you, my friend, is just crowned the devil. You have given him everything he needs to work against you. It is like a person that uh, is experiencing uh, uh, a certain disease in the body that is fighting them, and they don't believe they, they have that disease. From the moment they stop believing that they have that disease and they need to take action against that disease, that disease has already killed them. They'll just die a sudden death. Look at many people who don't believe there is war between hell and heaven. There is war between light and darkness. Those people are taken away suddenly. Those people are attacked. The devil uses anything. He doesn't even have to think hard. Some people think, ah, when you talk about spiritual warfare, why does it sound like the devil is winning? The devil does not win. What happens is that we empower him with our ignorance. We doubt, and when we exercise our power, we don't do so with wholeheartedness. But how then do you thank God for delivering you? Because the Lord says you shall come into his presence with thanksgiving. How are you going to come into the presence of God thanking him for delivering you from weapons you don't believe are being used against you, from a war you don't believe exists against you? As long as you don't understand that you are in a battle with the evil one. As long as you don't understand your role in that battle, you shall be defeated left, right, and center by those who do, whether they are in the darkness or they are in the light. So the word of God says here, call unto me, come before me with sacrifices of thanksgiving. Hmm? Come before God with sacrifices of thanksgiving. Come before him with gratitude. Knowing that he will deliver you. Believing that he will deliver you. My brother, my sister, how long have you been dealing with your situation? But now, after praying and believing, come before God with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving says, Lord, I already know that you have done with this situation. You have dealt with this situation and you have won this situation. This situation will no longer continue in my life. I have prayed the whole of January for foundational altars to be destroyed. I believe foundational altars have been destroyed. Now I come before you to thank you, to honor you. Do you know that you honor a person 
after they have done a good work you are honoring god because you believe your foundation has been dealt with many people believe the foundation has been dealt with but they never prayed <laughs> They never prayed for the foundation to be dealt with. They just believe simply because Jesus died on the cross. Simply because we have got ingredients in the kitchen. There is going to be food. How can there be no food? We are hungry. But Jesus came and he says, Behold, I give you power. Matthew, I mean Luke 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you what? I give you power. Then why then are you being given power to fight? When there is no war, he says, you shall tremble upon snakes and scorpions. How then do you tremble upon snakes and scorpions without fighting? Which snake do you know stands or lies there hoping for you to tremble upon it? Because Jesus says, tremble upon it. It shall be a fight when you tremble upon snakes and scorpions. It's a fight. And this is what we have been doing the whole of January. I believe those who have been joining us in prayer are beginning to see results. And will continue to see results. Because there is a God who answers prayer. Child of God, I don't want to lie to you. If you did not pray, I encourage you to challenge any kind of wickedness in your foundation. Challenge any kind of weapon that the devil is using in your life. Please, do not say simply because I am a Christian, there will be automatic results. There is no such thing. Jesus gave you power to fight. This is clear. I have overemphasized on this subject throughout of January. There are many believers who are misunderstanding the subject of grace when it comes to spiritual warfare, who think simply because we are in Christ Jesus, we are safe. No. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we are empowered to do what? To fight. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we are empowered. That's why he says, behold, I give you what? I give you power. So when you are calling unto God and you are honoring him, one of the things you want to elaborate before God is, God, I know, God, I understand, you gave me power. And I have been using that power to fight. Knowledge is power. And God's people perish for lack of it. If you have knowledge that God gave you power over all the power of the devil, you are better than the person who is walking out there thinking, number one, there is no spiritual warfare. Number two, I am safe by some mysterious way. Number three, I don't have to fight. If I don't fight the devil, the devil won't fight me. My brother, my sister, the knowledge of the kingdom is there to deliver you. And those who fight spiritual warfare, one way or the other, will reap the benefits of victory. <clears throat> At least if you make an effort to fight, your children will not have to fight battles you are supposed to fight. And your brothers and your sisters will not have to fight certain battles because you have fought them for the family. We did not say it's going to be a walk in the park, but whatever the case may be, the Lord will deliver you if you fight. At one point, Jesus sends them to fight spiritual warfare and he tells them he saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning, which means he saw the disciples winning. Child of God, when you are fighting spiritual warfare in the name of Jesus, with faith, in prayer, Jesus also saw Satan fall like lightning. Has he fallen like lightning in your family? I believe he has, if you were praying. If you have not been, continue to do so. Now, I would like to pray with someone who says, I have been praying. I believe God has answered me. I am here to honor God with thanksgiving. I am here to honor God with sacrifices of praise. Let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, the whole of January we have been praying. We have been trusting you with our lives. We have been trusting you, Commander-in-Chief of Heaven's Defense Forces, to completely destroy all wickedness in our foundation. Wickedness of anti-marriage. Wickedness of of early deaths, 
wickedness of poverty, wickedness of chronic illnesses that are put in our foundation by outers of different cases, of different scenarios. We believe, Lord God, that all those things were done for because your power is able to defeat all darkness. As the word of God says, light shines and darkness flees away. As the word of God says, resist the devil and he shall flee away. We have already been praying. Now the brothers and the sisters who are listening to this message have been calling unto you and they believe in you. This is why they called. Now Lord, we are here to honor you and to praise your name for that deliverance. I thank you for delivering people from anti-marriage spirits. I thank you for delivering people from sudden death, from chronic illnesses, from delay and limitation spirit, from spirits that fight destiny helpers, from spirits that have been holding them at ransom for all these years. Father, we called unto you, and we believe you held up your end of the bargain. You, Lord, delivered us, and will continue to do so, because it is to the glory of your name that your kingdom people are delivered. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am Minister T.D. Mkana, and I've been your pilot and your host throughout this January as we've been dealing with household wickedness, as we've been dealing with foundational wickedness. I believe the Lord heard you, and the Lord answered your prayer as surely as he has answered mine too. Let us join each other in the next segment and in the next series of February. From my family to yours, it is bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.